This is the Tinker Bar Model A. Tinker Bar Model A is a simple, lightweight, durable, inexpensive. It's an open source featuring modularity that allows you plug and play capability to adapt the bar to different situations. Uh, we also have a Model uh, B and we have a Model C, but this video will be focused uh, strictly on the Model A version. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, there's a lot to talk about uh, on the Model A here. And um, the first thing uh, that we see here is uh, this uh, shaft here. The shaft uh, handlebar here is uh, coated by an ultra smooth, uh, high tech material. It is UV resistant, it is salt resistant, sand resistant, uh, acid base resistant, uh, almost any kind of resistance uh, you can think of. And its smooth nature uh, is allows it to be um, very easy on the hands. Uh, so this bar doesn't create blisters uh, very easily at all. Uh, also, this coating is extremely durable too. Uh, going out here to uh, the end of the bar here, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here. And as I'm zooming in here, uh, we see a little uh, string here on the front side. And the string on the front side here, and this is used for wrapping up your lines at the end when you get them all wrapped up. So uh, just uh, using these two leader lines here, I'm going to just go ahead and pull these around and that's going to kind of simulate the lines on the bar here. Uh, when you go ahead and uh, pull these up here like this and come down, uh, that wraps up all the lines on your bar and helps them keep it compact and nice and clean when you're packing it up. And speaking about lines, uh, this is one of the big advantages of the Tinker Bar uh, system here is that it is a true uh, four line system bar, four equal line system bar. And there are a lot of advantages uh, to a true uh, four line equal system. So uh, to start with, if you have a four equal line system, uh, that means you can source your lines on the open market. Uh, you don't have to go back to the original manufacturer of the bar and buy their lines. So what a lot of manufacturers will do is they will create these unequal line combinations. They'll make the center lines different than the steering lines and so uh, being different than everybody else you, you just can't drop anything in there and start using it. You have to use the manufacturer's uh, lines. That can be quite expensive. You can easily pay $250 or more for a set of lines from a manufacturer. But if you uh, have a four equal line system uh, those same set of lines may only cost you $50 or $60 uh, in comparison. And in addition uh, to being an open source uh, four equal line system, this gives you a lot of choices in terms of uh, what different types of lines that you want. So you might choose to just go with lines that are uh, all of one color or you might separate the color uh, from say the center lines and the steering lines and that makes it easier to sort out tangles. And some people even do say, you know, like left on um, the blue side here, make a left line is uh, blue and then the right will be uh, the red color line. So you've got uh, a blue, whites in the center and red. So it makes it very easy to tell left and right and also to untangle things. If you think about it too, uh, if you have a four equal line system, uh, that means you can also rotate your lines. So the lines take most of the stress on the center uh, lines of the kite and uh, those wear out the fastest and break the soonest typically. But if you have a four equal line system, that means you can rotate your lines. So at the end of a season, you can take your center lines, move them to the steering, and take the steering and move them to the center, just like you'd rotate uh, tires on your car. So by doing that rotation, uh, your lines can last a very, very long time. Uh, one other advantage too is uh, since it's uh, open source design, you can go to thicker lines too. So uh, you see a lot of 1.4 millimeters uh, being used by manufacturers, but you can go up to 1.8 millimeters and uh, that 1.8 millimeters is very small additional cost on the open source market. You might only pay an extra five bucks, but uh, uh, 1.8 millimeter lines can be up to uh, four times more durable uh, than just the regular 1.4 millimeter lines. So all kinds of advantages there. So just summing up the advantages of the lines is that uh, you can go all, any length that you want uh, pretty much, and then you can get um, different color combinations to different thickness combinations and uh, those three characteristics give you lots of flexibility in line options that you just can't get from uh, traditional manufacturers. Okay so uh, moving back uh, to the handle part here of it I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom back in. Uh, we talked about in the early uh, part of this is the modularity of the system so uh, a great neat little feature here is you see this single screw right here 
And then we come over here and we see this uh, little screw uh, right here. So this screw, and there's one on the back side, if you remove these uh, three screws here, uh, that allows you to go ahead and um, uh, undo, unplug this handle altogether. This handle will just plug right out of the system, unplug from the system. And then uh, you can actually separate uh, both of these and then you can put in a new uh, cross center shaft assembly. Uh, why would you want to do that? Well, if you're a beginner, it's advantageous to have a small bar and or if you're flying in high winds and um, uh, have a, a kite, it's good to have that smaller bar. But if you say go to a big kite, say 17 meter in uh, 10 meter, uh, 10 mile per hour winds, it's advantageous to have a bigger bar. So normally uh, in the history of kiteboarding bars, people would just buy new bars every time they need a different width. But you don't have to do that. You can see the wisdom of the modularity. So if you can unplug these end caps, uh, you can simply just buy a new crossed uh, shaft here instead of having to buy a new bar. So that can save you hundreds of dollars uh, just by itself. Uh, moving on here uh, to the center assembly here. We call this uh, the center spinner assembly here. And uh, there's a lot of advantages uh, to this as well. So what this allows you to do is, uh, say you got your bar uh, in this orientation here, and then uh, you got your center part uh, going up through the center here. Traditionally, on these kiteboarding bars, uh, you have holes in the bar. And uh, as you run that shaft, this shaft here through it, um, there's only a certain amount of space. So when you turn this, you know, left or right, if you turn it like about 45, maybe 50 degrees, they start binding up because there's only so much uh, room uh, for this center piece here. But because this is a swivel assembly, look what happens. We can go all the way around here. We can go up to the full 90 degrees. And uh, because of that, that gives you a lot more uh, turning ability uh, of the kite itself. So. It's a, for a same size bar, you get a lot more turning ability, but then you can actually <laughs> rotate all the way around too. And sometimes that's handy uh, if you're trying to untangle things. And then in addition, uh, the whole uh, bar can also rotate this way as well too. So you've got the full uh, swivel ability there. And uh, we found from experience uh, that this uh, center shaft here that slides through uh, the center spinner assembly, it's good to grease this often, maybe like once every uh, five sessions. And if you don't have enough grease on it, uh, we find that it likes to stick some uh, in there. So keep that well lubricated uh, as you uh, continue uh, to use that. Uh, the bars are just uh, very durable in nature and um, the parts are all 3D printed. And as a result of that, uh, some people think, well, if it's uh, 3D printed, it's gonna break very easily and uh, it's just, you know, very poorly, cheaply made. But uh, I find that's not the case at all. Uh, these handles can take tremendous impact and you can take a, a five pound hammer and hit it really hard and uh, they do not break. And yes, I'm sure you can break it if you want to, but uh, just under normal kiteboarding use, uh, no, it's uh, quite, quite durable. Uh, going back to the handle here, um, zooming back in on this, uh, we have the ability to uh, change uh, the trim uh, adjustment on the steering lines. So if we take this slider here and we just slide this out like this, we see we've got like a series of ridges here on the inside. And uh, because we have those ridges, we can take this uh, puller here and just pull this. And we can actually just take this and loop it around into one of those ridges. So this adjusts the ride height uh, of the bar. and. Um, once you make uh, done make that adjustment, you can go ahead and slide that slider back over and you're ready to go again. So if your bar is, say, running uh, too high, you can undo a loop. Uh, if your bar is running too low, you can add a loop here. And uh, that is kind of like the, the power or depower mechanism uh, that you'd find in uh, the center parts of most kiteboarding bars. So um, that's a question you may have right away is, uh, what about the depower mechanism? When you look at this, uh, you don't see a traditional uh, depower mechanism. So I'm going to go back to where a depower mechanism would normally occur. And that would normally occur in this space here, uh, right where the two center lines uh, come together. And a lot of different systems, they use different methods uh, for this uh, depower or trim adjustment in this area. They may use uh, cleats, they may use straps or other methods. <clears throat> They can be a lot of problems with those uh, different systems and they wear out and they can fail uh, fairly quickly sometimes. 
But uh, if you have a weight here, you know, say you got a metal cleat and your kite uh, slams to water and then powers back up suddenly, uh, that's a lot of weight, you know, that can ricochet uh, very quickly and hit you. And also, too, if you have uh, any kind of mechanism here for trying to control uh, the length of the center lines, you know, like cleats or straps, that's taken up valuable real estate for the bar to travel up and down. So blast systems, they take up a full foot of space there. So if you got a full extra foot there, that's all additional bar travel. So if you have that additional bar travel and you uh, just go ahead and let the bar go and it slides uh, additional foot all the way up, that is basically a, a full depower system all by itself without all the extra expense and clutter, and maintenance and hassle of having uh, something there to uh, try to control um, that normal uh, depower system. And then uh, going up here, uh, we have uh, what we call a stopper ball, and it's actually more like a cylinder than a ball, but uh, this can slide up and down, and then you can reset that to uh, have it stop at a certain height. And um, if you're a beginner, I'd recommend that you just go ahead and uh, slide that all the way up to the top, and then um, uh, leave it right there. And then as we zoom in here, we'll see that um, we have got a little stainless steel ring here, and this is where your lines uh, connect to. And uh, uh, if you have a fifth line system, the fifth line would also pass through this metal uh, stainless steel ring here. And it looks very small, but uh, that ring is incredibly durable, uh, very, very, very strong, and uh, no problems with uh, breakage uh, whatsoever with that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, zoom back out here. And then we're going to slide back over uh, to the other side here uh, where we got the chicken loop. And uh, chicken loop, a uh, similar story here is that uh, in a lot of uh, systems, we'll go ahead and turn this so we can just uh, focus on the chicken loop. A lot of systems uh, take up a lot of space uh, in their chicken loops. And um, zoom a little bit back out here. So uh, a lot of systems I see take up at least twice as much, maybe two and a half times uh, the length of uh, the Tinker Bar chicken loop system. And uh, if a smaller compact chicken loop is, can be very advantageous if you are a shorter person or if you are a child or if you've ever had a problem uh, just trying to reach your bar when you're laying back in the water to fly your kite, a Tinker Bar is for you because uh, normal systems, you know, take up this much space here, but Tinker Bar has shrunk that all down into a much smaller space, so there's a lot more room uh, for bar travel. Tinker Bar has the highest bar travel of almost any system on the market, so uh, just having that very long bar travel gives you a lot of abilities to do things that you can't do with uh, traditional systems. Uh, the emergency release here. Uh, if you go ahead and pull uh, this orange slider here, you'll see this metal ring uh, pop out here. And then uh, that metal ring, if the kite is under force, uh, that metal ring will slide right through and it will come right out uh, through the orange slider assembly there. So uh, when people uh, go ahead and uh, put this back together, um, several things to keep in mind. Uh, one is make sure this black shaft is pushed all the way into the red housing. So I push that in and it is. So then uh, you can go ahead and bend that around and then this uh, little stainless steel ring has a bend in it and that little bend is supposed to be there. That helps it go over the shaft which I'll show you in just a second. And that uh, stainless steel ring, uh, that slides right through there. And then you have to thread it under that little steel shaft there. So I go ahead and get it in there and get it a little tricky to do. And uh, that's why we recommend that you just don't do this uh, whenever you need to land your kite. Uh, only do this if you like really have an emergency. And then uh, go ahead and just slide this and uh, push it over with your thumb. And then when you push it over, there'll be a little groove in the orange slider and it slides up and uh, ta-da, you're ready to go again. Uh, the chicken stick here is uh, very flexible in nature and you can bend and twist this as you need it uh, to go ahead and get that into uh, your spreader bar. And then um, there's a lot of different uh, features uh, that can come uh, with uh, options and upgrades that can come with uh, the Tinker Bar Model A version. And uh, some of those include uh, spinner assemblies. So if we go back up here uh, to the top here, 
Uh, you can order an optional spinner assembly that goes on the top here. And what that spinner assembly does is it allows um, your center lines to become untangled. So if you're looping your kite around a lot or falling or landing in the water, and it's just kind of going in circles, uh, that spinner assembly will spin to uh, untangle your lines. And then uh, you have an uh, optional uh, overhead flagging system. So with a flagging system, if you uh, go ahead and engage the flagging system, that's going to convert all the power to a single uh, front line of the kite, either the left or right. And that's going to essentially completely uh, depower the kite uh, completely. So you have the option to either go with the overhead uh, flagging system or uh, an underhead or underbar uh, flagging system, which uh, will come out through uh, the chicken loop here. And then there is also a two-stage uh, release uh, system too as an optional upgrade and with the two-stage system uh, that allows you to hit one safety and then the kite will completely flag out and then you're still connected with the kite but if you hit the second stage then the kite will release completely and uh, with the two-stage system that completely takes place the use of a leash so you don't even need to have a leash at all and then uh, and some other options too is uh, what we call uh, handle uh, floats and then uh, the handle floats uh, what those do is on your um, steering lines here, uh, there will be little floats uh, that run from the top of the handle to about uh, one foot up. And these handle floats are just sometimes just used as like uh, handles. And then uh, they also give you like some more protection from the lines too. And then uh, you also have optional uh, movable stopper balls. So the stopper balls can slide up and down uh, these steering lines here. And these stopper balls are handy to grab onto uh, when you're relaunching your kite. You can just go ahead and grab the line too, but that stopper ball gives you a lot of extra uh, leverage and just much easier to use. And uh, with that, uh, we covered uh, most of the basics, I think, for uh, the uh, options and upgrades. So uh, we talked about the uh, overhead flagging, the underbar flagging, two-stage safety system, the handle floats, uh, stopper balls. And then uh, the spinner uh, options, spinner assembly options. So uh, just kind of summing it uh, back up, uh, the Tinker Bar is uh, an open source uh, design. Uh, you can actually uh, download uh, these uh, files and uh, make adjustments on your own and share them uh, with the community. So it's uh, a process of continuous improvement and ongoing improvement. And you see a wide compatibility uh, of the improvements with the older designs so a lot of manufacturers when they change something you know they they don't offer the replacement part and then uh, you essentially have to buy a whole new bar uh, all over again which is like very very expensive but uh, that's not really so much of a problem uh, since we have like great control uh, over uh, the parts and the modularity uh, of the system so uh, summing it back up, uh, the Tinker Bar A is a simple, uh, lightweight design. It's durable, it's inexpensive, it's open source, and uh, this modularity ability allows you to change the width of the bar or to add and subtract features as your style of riding changes. Uh, a couple notes in uh, closing regarding the weight of the bar. Tinker Bar is very lightweight in nature, and you can have bars out there on the system um, on the market that sell uh, that weigh like five pounds and uh, five pounds is just like an incredible weight and I've seen like some uh, spinner assemblies and uh, cam cleat assemblies up here at the top uh, that weigh probably like uh, maybe two pounds in themselves so all that extra weight you know swinging around when you're having an accident uh, that can be all really dangerous if that weight is like ricocheting uh, towards you so a lightweight bar is, is nice to have in terms of safety but it's also nice to have if the wind drops and uh, things become real lightweight um, or light wind because uh, if your kite is flying in light wind and your kite has to all of a sudden haul around an extra five pounds of weight uh, on the bar that's hard to keep that kite up in the air but when you got a lightweight bar system uh, the kite keeps flying it's the kite will fly better with a lighter weight uh, bar hanging at the bottom of it so uh, that uh, concludes uh, most of the features and options and uh, upgrades and uh, some of the tips and tricks uh, regarding the Model A uh, bar system. Um, uh, have fun out there, be safe, and we'll see you later.